Hey guys, welcome to Saints TV. It's round nine review time. I'm just here at Eddie Han in the car park. Went with my uncle and my mum. Thought we had every chance of beating Collingwood tonight. Um, and pretty much for a half, I thought we had a chance. I thought we were good for the first half, but in the end, it was a final score of Saints 72. I'm surprised we even scored that high, to be honest. So 72 to Collingwood 100. It was a 28 point loss, but I thought that the final score was pretty flattering. I thought in the end they were going to win by easily 30 to 40 to 50 points the way we were playing in that last. We just let them have the ball, didn't think to do anything with the ball, and um, I mean, didn't really have any endeavour in the second half, um, which was really disappointing. But I'm going to try and start off with some positives, I guess. It's hard to narrow down the positives, but I don't want to be too negative in the video. Um, because that's easy to do, but I thought Phillips backed up last week's first game. He had 19 and was really good. Um, I thought Dunstan was by far our best player, best clearance player. He had 78% efficiency. He had 32 possessions, so I was really happy with him. Jack Stephen got back to somewhat of his best. He had He had a good 29 disposals and was the only player that looked like kicking well inside 50 when Membry was leading for the ball. My throat's a bit sore. I was yelling pretty hard for that entire game. I don't even know why I put in that much effort when we play so poorly, but my throat's absolutely gone, so just bear with me on this. Yeah, uh, who is that? Andrew just mentioned there in the comments that our young players were okay. And 100%, Hunter Clark was probably his best, his best game for the club. Caulfield was good. Mentioned to Bailey Rice, who debuted and had his first game for the club. I thought he was pretty good under some serious pressure in the back line. Um, <clears throat> then you've got Phillips as well. So you've got four young players that have played yes, less than 10 games. And they were the leaders on the ground. I was telling my uncle my mum, you know, it's a worry when you've got those young players who are by far the standouts. And then you look at the rest of the team that's been there over 100 games, 150 games, 200 games. And they're the ones that aren't performing. It's the young ones coming in that are performing because they feel like there's pressure on their positions. And this is why I've said every week that Richo needs to drop someone big because it kind of puts everyone on, on, you know, they're kind of worried about their position. They're on edge a little bit and they know they have to compete. But when, you know, you get, you can easily get comfortable and complacent and you know your, your position's locked every week like for Billings, I mean, Nunes, very special mention for Nunes. He kicked four goals to in a new position up forward. I really like that. I think we've found a good spot for him. He's a good mark. He used his body really well one-on-one. -on -one. He's kicking, he was, his kicking was good. And our kicking is shit. Tim Membry needs to take a leaf out of Jack Nunes' book, which I wouldn't have said last week, but I think he does. Nunes kicked four goals to Jack Loney, who everyone has given shit to, including me. I, I will be the first to admit that I didn't think he should have come in this week. Uh, but he kicked uh, two first quarter goals, or he's kicked, yeah, he kicked two goals in the first half. Six goals between Jack Nunes and Jack Loney, and that's six of our ten, I think, we kicked for the game. Who would have guessed that they would have kicked six of our ten? Uh, it's kind of, it's a good thing, but it's also a really bad thing because they're not our better players, and yet they've kicked more than half our freaking score. So I don't know how to deal with that. Downside was Geary again was pretty poor as a captain. You could see every time Collingwood got a run on, we were looking for someone to just control everyone, at their attitude, and it just didn't happen. He just kind of let it happen. And I think someone commented at half time or three quarter time saying we must be the worst team in terms of junk time, in terms of, you know, the last five minutes of every quarter, because we just give up goal after fucking goal, goal after goal. We were eight points up at the start of the third quarter, and we ended up being 28 points down by the end of the quarter. It's a, 30, it's a six goal straight turnaround. And we started the first quarter really well, <clears throat> second quarter really well, third quarter really well, and then from probably 15 minute mark of the third, they kicked six goals, hit the front by five goals, and then from then on, we did not know what to do with the, with the, with the ball. Uh, I'm gonna go through some of these comments. Let's go back to the top, because there's a few. Um, so thanks for commenting. Luke reckons Armitage and Weller were very poor. Yep. 100% Armitage should not be getting a game. I don't care if people say that he's a senior head and that we need a, a leader on the field. He is not good enough to play. There are players like Brandon White, um, 
Nathan Freeman, but unfortunately I think he went off with a shoulder injury for Sandy today, so it looks like he's going to be on the sidelines again. So we're probably never going to get to see Nathan Freeman play this year because he just can't seem to keep fit. There's players like Josh Battle. You can see that Membry <clears throat> is not a number one forward. He just doesn't kick goals when you need them to. He's kicked one goal eight in two weeks. You just can't have that from your key forward. I think Battle needs to come in next week and needs to balance it out. Marshall was okay, but he just wasn't dangerous in the forward line. Kingsley says, got to take our chances when we dominate the first part of the third term. Yep, 100%. Then some pretty dodgy umpiring calls in the third. Yep. I posted at three-quarter time and said that the umpiring was was hurting us. Not that it was costing us, because our own skills were costing us, because we weren't kicking goals, just like Kingsley said. But there were so many fucking shit decisions, like Jack Steven dodging, getting tackled, getting a clear handball away, holding the ball happens. Two seconds later, a Collingwood guy, play on, they kick a goal. They take marks in the goal square that they drop. It's a mark. You know, they, they just... It, we kicked two good goals that were easily, you know cleared and they still reviewed them you know and I mean we got the goals but they still tried to fuck it up in some way and it was just we couldn't that was when we were on top and then you know they get a couple of quick goals and our heads drop and then that's when leadership comes into it now you look at Essendon today I don't know if Danaher didn't play because he was injured or because they dropped him but they seem to do they've been under pressure and then you saw them respond and they absolutely smashed Geelong. They had no chance. We had more of a chance beating Collingwood than Essendon did beating Geelong and they went and did the job. Let's keep going. Uh, <laughs> Darren says nearly threw the chair at the TV because of Armitage. I was at the game and I wanted to jump on the field and just give him the football and just teach him how to fucking play because he just doesn't know what's going on. Um, much better first half. I agree, but I feel like that's almost papering over the cracks. Richard is going to do the same thing. I bet you in his press conference he's going to say, well, last week our third term was really good. Um, this week we had a great first half, so that's one more better quarter than last week. We're just building to something, you know. By the time we get to round 23, that's when we'll get four quarters, and by then we'll be one win from, like, 20. So um, I'm trying to keep positive, but it's very difficult to do so. Damo, sick of carrying unskilled veterans. Yep, Geary, Armitage. That's probably the two that I would... If I was coached, I would not be playing them. I wouldn't even have made Geary captain. I've said that every week. Um, but it just seems to be something that we can't change, and you just can't. Um, yep, Luke, Nunes, 100% should stay forward. He kicked four goals, too. was our most likely, the most lively, and he tackled. It's just a shift. It's just <clears throat> in defense, you're worrying about a guy, and you're worrying about the ball. In the forward line, he just needs to compete and get the ball. And he doesn't even need to worry about his man unless his man's a Johansson or someone that's going to run off him and hurt us. But he wasn't, so he just had to compete. He kicked his four goals too, had six chances, um, and was one of our better players. So good on him, and I've been giving him shit all season, but he, he actually played well. Uh, let's keep going. Umpires were in black and white. Damo, Loney, Nunes, and Gresh are only goal kickers. Is that really true? Lone three or three goal kickers I can't even remember but if we don't kick many goals so I should really remember these things David no confidence in the game plan young lads look lost too what is the game plan I thought it was a good thing that Richo was on the bench for the entire game because he did that for a quarter or two last week against Fremantle and we were better when he was on the bench and then tonight he was on the bench the whole game it looks like is that desperation is he trying something different he's trying to be closer to the players for a half it worked, and for a half it looked like we were playing man on man. Every time Collingwood were looking to chip it around, we had a guy there, we cut it off or we stopped their play. We let the mark happen, but we slowed them down. Second half, it was this zonal bullshit again, and you watch the last quarter, how many uncontested marks did they take? I'm going to guess around 70 or 80. They just milked the clock for about 10 minutes, and that pretty much saved them the game and any chance of us coming back. <clears throat> Rob says, boys need to go back to one-on-one -on -one footy. Too many Collingwood players on their own. Exactly what I just said. So good on you, uh, Rob. Good point. Uh, Ellis, or Elise, looks like Membry never has a one-on-one -on -one marking opportunity, which is one of his strengths. He's always being outnumbered. Yep, and people are going to hate me for this, but I think we miss Josh Bruce more than anything because he takes that other defender. Also a Paddy McCartan. There are two key forwards.